Welcome to another edition of the Wonder Ray Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm Dave. And you can find us online at wonderberry.com. You can find me on social medias as Open Darkwing. Yeah, you can find me uh, on TikTok still. Still too running the about. TikToks. Yeah, I don't do much, really. Yeah. How's your week been? <laughs> Not bad. Sort that of. Laugh, that laugh made me think something was going on. <laughs> so we have this Cadillac. Yeah. It was like the worst designed Cadillac ever. It's probably the worst designed car ever. Uh, Reddit calls it a crap Terra. So, oh boy. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out a funky uh, steering issue with it. I wound up uh, replacing the steering gear in it. Which is fun to do when there's no book so i don't yeah i don't know there's 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 different manuals like different stages of manuals for vehicles and there's like the owner's manual it tells you like oh hey if you're if your headlights out check this fuse first and then put this type of bulb in it you know it takes this kind of oil you know the owner's manual is all the basic stuff and then there's the service manual or shop manual that's the one that is like, when you have to take this part out of the car, here are all of the steps, here's where all of the bolts are, these are the type of bolts, and this is when you put it back together, or the torque spec for each of the bolts, you know. Sure. There's no, I, I can't find a service manual for this car. That never bodes well for anything. No, so it's been a like, everything's just been a guess and check on it. And luckily, like, my diagnostic skills are pretty amazing in this sort of area. So I was able to get it out. It was only a 10-hour process of, like, okay, so I I can get this undid. It seems like this is in the way. So this is going to have to come out. You know, and I'm like, okay, this is in the way. Air conditioning line's in the way. It's not going to move. It doesn't flex. Air conditioning has to be jettisoned. This line has to be removed. Okay, brake booster, master cylinder, all the brake lines have to come out. Those are all in the way. Crap, I can't get the brake booster out. Windshield, like the wiper blade assembly is in the way. Okay, that has to come out. How's that come out? So it's been, I'm like reverse engineering how this car was put together because there's zero, zero information on it. <coughs> the funny thing is, is like, it was based on an Opel Omega B, which is like the German, it's a German GM brand. Yeah. You know, and they, they made this Opel Omega B, which was a stellar car. And, like, super powerful, super lightweight, ran like a champ, didn't really have a whole lot of problems. They brought it over here. It was originally supposed to be a Saturn. And then, for some reason, somebody in the design chain said, actually, we need a super affordable Cadillac to get people in on the Cadillac brand. And so they took the Saturn, made it a Cadillac, but also... They added, like, almost 700 pounds of weight, moved a bunch of stuff around. They used a cheaper plastic, so, like, the plastic all crumbles weird. A whole lot of just weird, awful things about it that don't happen on the Opal Omega, which I can find information on. So I found, like, the I found the instructions for taking the, the steering gear out of the Opal Omega, and it's like, remove these four bolts here, remove remove the the idler arm, remove the pitman arm, remove the steering shaft from the steering gear, and it falls out the bottom. 
of the car. Like, it, it was literally like four steps and it was done. Huh. And the Cadillac, but it's also a right-hand drive. And I got to looking at the other side of the car and I'm like, oh yeah, there's way more room over there. Like, it would have been stupid simple over there. Looking at this car, it's got so much more stuff crammed in on this side. Like, it's where all the electronics are. It's where the air conditioning is. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> so, it was a 10-hour process. And most of that was just like, okay, so what do I do next? You know, and having to sit there and like, okay, this goes here, but then this has got to come out. But does that need to come? Do I need to just like move this or sh like shift this over? Does this really need to come out? You See, know? everything that you're talking about right now is just further proving to me why I pay someone else to do that shit. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing is that was my job. Like, I I was an ASE mechanic. That would that would have been me in the shop. Like, if I was at the shop you go to, that would have been me. If you had this car and you brought it into the shop, they'd have given it to me and been like, hey, you're the guy. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but normally that stuff would be easier if you, like, if there's a book. The book is, the having the book makes it so much easier because it's literally step-by-step -step instructions. It's like, oh, remove these four bolts. They're here. There's a little picture. It's a little illustration. It says those four bolts are there take this up like these are the the order there's an order of operations and this is what you do yeah that makes more sense then yeah i didn't have that but still but... why i i i pay people to do shit yeah always will but then again Seeing it from kind of the other side of me with computers and I understand, you know, people paying other people for stuff and I would never pay someone to do anything with my computer. Although I found an interesting issue as I was unpacking my uh, new graphics card. Oh, yeah, that's new from last episode. I got my, so I got my hands on an Intel A380. Hey. So... We'll be doing all sorts of tests once I actually get it installed. So the problem with it, it's not it's not a problem. I just need to get a little interestingly fancy. So it's a it's a very small graphics card and it fits nicely into the secondary the long boy slot for PCIe, right? Yeah. The problem is, is that I have uh, an Elgato capture card and um, an extra USB card in my other PCI slots, the, the smaller ones. Which means there's no room for the A380 at the moment because they're all too close together. The only one that has the distance riser is the main graphics card thing because the 2000 series and then if I ever go with a 3000 series or anything bigger, it would be even larger in there. So I need to get myself a riser cable for small PCIe and vertically mount either my capture card or my USB card, <laughs> which is going to be most likely going to be my capture card because I use it the least because I have uh, my cam link. I have a 4K one that's a USB one. So it's not installed yet. It's been chilling on my desk for a while, just staring at the world. Cause you know, what are there? yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not, it's not terrible. Yeah. But I do have it. I'm currently going through and making a list of all of my apps that I have installed. Cause I think when I install it, I'm going to do a clean, completely clean install of windows. Oof. <laughs> I don't usually like doing that because it's absolutely fucking annoying. 
But on the other hand, there's a lot of stuff that I've gone through, especially with the audio side of uninstalling voice meter now and like figuring out audio stuff that I'm still running into issues very rarely, but I'm still running into issues where things will override on each other or drivers aren't set perfectly well. So I think just clearing it and cleaning it and starting fresh would be the best way to go about that. Yeah. Get a fresh wipe and just build it from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't done it since I originally installed, so. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll have to see how it all works out. But I think that way, especially since I'm going to be running dual graphics cards, getting it started from the beginning that way, and then then we'll come testing. So, I. Yeah. Yeah. Should be interesting. I'm going to try to get all sorts of high dynamic, and I think I might use your your fancy audio stuff to do some testing. What? Your fancy what? speakers. Fancy speakers? Oh, my soundbar? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to be putting some videos together and testing um, more high dynamic range audio as well as AV1 and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah. You're going to try to, you're going to check into Opus because I think you can stream to YouTube and Opus using 5.1. OPUS? Yeah. I, I believe. As long as. Do, 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 as long as OBS has availability for Opus. I'm not sure. Well, let me open up. Let me just. Yeah, I was going to say. Open you know, my I current even... version and see if Opus <laughs> is even an option. I didn't even think. I didn't even think to check that far. I was pretty sure YouTube Setting. supported it. I know, I know it's it's pretty big on people that don't want to support the Dolby system, which is sad because it is a it's a really good system. Um, and it's silly that like there's there's streaming services that don't support Dolby because it's it's free for the streaming services to use. They can just use it, so I don't. I don't know why there aren't. I don't know why there's streaming services that don't have it. Well, I think I understand why Hulu doesn't have it. Hulu Hulu doesn't have it because I bet Hulu goes away as they merge more things into Disney Plus, and Disney Plus just becomes the home for all Disney content. But... Yeah, they already like. I think. I pay for the bundled, so I got Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Yeah. All yeah. in one. Yeah, but I bet you ESPN Plus and Hulu both slowly go away. Because we aren't, we aren't going to see any feature upgrades in them. And we are seeing more stuff move towards Disney Plus. So I can set channels in OBS. Okay. And I can set 5.1 or 7.1. So it gives me 2140, 4151, and 71. Ooh. Give me a 7.1 stream. But... Although Facebook Live and YouTube Live both accept surround ingest, Facebook Live downmixes to stereo and YouTube Live plays only two channels. Really? So let me then, now that I know that I can do multiple channels, let's find out what YouTube Live does actually support. 
Huh. Okay. As of right now, and this could change. Um, that's the video codex. Where do I find audio codex? I'm showing their audio codex as AAC or MP3. At 128 kilobit stereo. Whew. Are you kidding me? Now, note that this is for the live stream. Yeah. Because I can't do, they don't even have uh, AV1 live stream yet ish. Could do HDR. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're, it's, it's AAC or MP3 still. That's dumb. Well, Golly. here's, here's the thing. And, and this is where the, the last, what, three months is the first time that other, that the encoding Hardware encoding has been able to handle with and deal with the higher stuff. So AV1 on a hardware encode hasn't been available until the Intel Arc series and now NVIDIA's 4000 or 40 series. And so no one's caught up with it yet because it's got awful expensive. Yeah, no, nobody seems to care about the audio as much. I mean, if if we cared about audio, we would probably use something that, you know, had been updated since 1998. When was the last time MP3 was updated? Oh, fuck, I have no, uh... Latest release, April, April 1998. <laughs> What a guess, babe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Nice. And I mean, as as fun as MP3 is on the update, freaking, would you say 98? Yeah. Yeah. And AAC, its last update was December 2019, so three years ago now. So AAC hasn't even gotten updates in three years. Yeah. MP3 is, yeah, it's just... MP3 is just a sad, sad, sad format anyways. I mean, it was great for, back in the day this, when your options were MP3 or even worse garbage. Yeah. Well, I mean, Vorbis has been around since 2002, and it was updated in 2020. So, started in 93. Development started in 93. I think that... Things are going to get better. Um, Google seems to be highly pushing um, highly pushing a lot of more open source solutions. And I think it's going to get better. Yeah. 
I don't know. You look at the state of some of the other things they've pushed as open source solutions, like v, like WebM and WebP. Like they've been around for I don't even know how long at this point, damn near a decade. And uh, when's the last when? When's the last time you exported an image as a WebP? Um. Yeah. <laughs> but WebM is used all over the place still, though. Yeah, WebM is used on YouTube. WebP. I think WebP was discontinued for... No, WebP is amazing. It is better than a PNG. It's better than a JPEG. And it's better than a GIF. Oh, and I guess its latest stable release was 21 months ago, so it's still being utilized. Yep. Yeah, you can do transparencies and animations in it. It is it is honestly the best image format, Dave. Next to raw. Like if you want like a raw image, yeah, you got to use like a raw format. If you want an internet image, you should be using WebP. Like period. Hands down. That's the only thing you should be using. You know what supports it? Nothing. I don't. I don't even know. I would love to support it, and I don't even know what supports it. Um, let's see. <sighs> Chrome Edge supports it. Safari oh, yeah, supports it. Yeah, it's built into Chromium. Uh, Firefox supports it. Yeah, what websites? Where can I go and... <laughs> I don't know yet. I've been tr I've been trying to figure this out. It's like, where can I like? I don't, I'm not. I had to download like a plugin to be able to create WebP images in GIMP. Yep. Uh, the plugin was shipped in GIMP 2.9 branch and received multiple implements. Google's yeah. also released a plugin for Microsoft Windows that supports WebP support in Windows Photo Viewer, Microsoft Office, Fast Picture Viewer. Uh, Blender supports WebP. Everyone supports WebP. The problem is, is that for Photoshop, no, I guess it looks like uh, 23.2, they support it. Hmm. I didn't know if Photoshop did. That's nice. Uh, um... FFmpeg linked with VP8, VP9 reference codex library can extract VP8 keyframes from WebM Media and script and add the WebP riff header. Yeah, it looks like everyone seems to be supporting it for the most part. Hmm. Um, WebP2 is a playground for image compression experiments, so it seems like it's well supported. But there are, here's the problems. Is that they are uh, restrained in how big they can actually be uh, pixels wise. What do you mean the, Im the actual image? 16383 and that's it for a side length. So yeah, yeah. it's fine, it, but 
I don't under so here's here's my thing and what I think that people should be doing for images more so than I mean I get it that you gotta have some stuff, but for web images, I don't understand why more people don't use SVGs. I mean, I get the whole raster versus vector imaging. I get that. I get why that's annoying for some. But SVG is because it's a mathematical algorithm for the image itself means that for web images, you can resize the image to anything without any loss of um, quality because it's a mathematical image. You're not playing around with pixels. You're playing around with mathematical lines. Yeah. But yeah, as of November 2021, web browsers support WebP have 96% market share. Huh. Yeah, I knew I knew Chromium like had it in the base support. It was like one of the first things that uh that Google did with it. Yeah. No, it's uh Yeah, yeah, sixteen three D four, sixteen three D four isn't terrible, but I don't know. I don't know why it's not more widely used. Other yeah. than creatives don't like changing things when they don't know what's going to happen with them. <laughs> and as much as I like and appreciate Google, you know, Opus hasn't been updated in three years. Really? Oh, there's their latest stable release is April 12th, 2019. Huh. <clears throat> So anyways, I'm just saying that, you know, that's, as much as I'd like to be hopeful for the, the Google open source. I think, I think AV1, the fact that Intel, uh, NVIDIA and AMD all suddenly went all in this year on hardware encoding decoding for AV1 means that it's actually going to stick around. Yeah, that'll stick around, but I th I don't think that I don't I don't think their open source competitor to Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos are going to get very far. I th I think it's going to run into the same kind of issue. Yeah, I don't I don't know how far it's going to go. I mean I just I I think that seeing the three companies that make the chipsets for encoding and decoding three main the three uh, consumer grade ones have gone all in on AV1 as a standard and they all shied away from uh, H265 says a lot to where they believe that it's going. Yeah. I mean, they, they went from H264 to AV1. And that's a big deal. I mean, H.264 is obviously still there because everyone ingests 264. But 265, that's a big, a big deal to skip. Yeah. And backing AV1... I mean, AV1 is going to be, is, that's their video side, but AO Media, I don't know. 
the Alliance for Open Media, they're pushing. And they've got some huge backers. And the other one, ooh, when did they sign on? Huh. Uh, the Alliance for Open Media. I mean, Amazon, Cisco, Google, Intel, Microsoft, Mozilla, and Netflix are all backing the Alliance for Open Media. Are there any real studios in there, though? Netflix? I don't really. I mean, I just barely count them as a real studio yet. I mean, that I... Their stuff is good, but it's not epic level good yet, you know? I think, I think they have uh, a habit of killing stuff. They do have a habit of killing stuff because they look at trends of what people are watching. Yeah. The nice thing is, is that because everything is digital and streamed, they know exactly what people are watching. Yeah. And... I, I, you know, I, I everyone think... else has a habit of killing stuff too. I mean, I would consider Fox a real studios and we saw what they did with Firefly. Well, yeah, but they've also done like, they've also somehow managed to keep the Simpsons alive for longer than we can keep ourselves alive. Well, it, 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 be. There's money behind. There's money coming in from it. Yeah, but I think if if they don't get the support from if they don't get support from like big hardware manufacturers and big theaters pushing out the big blockbuster movies, I don't I don't see I don't see this I don't see it working. You know. Netflix has claimed eight Academy Awards from 54 nominations since 2014, including three Best Picture nominees in the last two years alone. Huh. For what? Uh, I'm, not, I'm just looking at... I, just kind of scanning through a <laughs> article about Netflix studios and being one of the largest studios in Hollywood right now. Well, I know, I know that Amazon bought MGM too. I never think about that. Yeah. I mean, Yeah, and Amazon is into the Alliance for Open Media. So, yeah, MGM, Netflix. Let's see. List of accolades received by Netflix. Here we go. Best pictures. This is from nine. This is 2019 to 2022. For best picture. Um... Winners and nominees together. So that this will work. Uh, Roma, The Irishman, Marriage Story, Mank, The Trial, Chicago 7, Don't Look Up, Power of the Dog. Wait, Marriage Story was? Yeah, Marriage Story is a Netflix. Is the Irishman Irish? was a Netflix. And that was Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Best Actor nominees, Adam Driver, Jonathan Price, Chadwick Boseman, Gary Oldman, Benedict Cumberbatch, Andrew Garfield. Yeah, they're... Huh. This is not... This is not just... It's it's no longer just kind of on the... Their major awards from the Academy Awards is, um, is long. And then Emmy Awards. Yeah, Black They've Fear. won multiple Emmys. <clears throat> I mean, Black Mirror alone for television movies have won three Emmys. Yeah. 2017, 2018, and 
they've uh they've definitely won some crazy stuff they've won multiple grant or they've been nominated for multiple grammys and have won three for song written for visual media music film and score soundtrack for visual media multiple golden golden globe awards so they don't have any academy award best picture winners but they have nominations uh, they have best, best picture they have best no. director winners two best director winners seven nominees but but your point kind of still stands with yeah they're they're getting right up there they're 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 not a they're not a scrappy no nonsense studio anymore yeah they've built and they didn't get that those accolades from buying something they it's they're still built up i mean it's not like they bought another no offense to amazon but it's not like they bought mgm and <laughs> then been around for propped up years. mgm's accolades as look what we've done yeah so there's you know it's it's not it's not small yeah what? What's that? A little sidetrack. Did Did you watch Wednesday? Yes, I watched uh, most of Wednesday. I had to miss a few episodes. I need to go back and rewatch it. But yes, yeah, I've got Love that show. I think I have two episodes left to watch. So that's an MGM property, the Adams Family. Yes. And so I was reading a little bit about that, and I was like, okay, how's that work? Amazon owns MGM. Uh, Netflix started production on it with MGM before Amazon purchased it. Yep. So it's like, okay, they got one good season out of it. I think they've got more. I think they'll end up having more than one season out of this. Do you think it'll stay in yes. Netflix? I think. Uh, <laughs> your brain a little it, there, didn't it? No, not necessarily. I I don't. I need to look up with the con with the original contract. Um, with MGM stated. Yeah, because if it's a good run. It'll prevent Amazon from doing other Adams Family material. I bet. This is just well, this is just a guess. Because it could it could just be I mean I don't believe yes, Wednesday Adams is an Adams family um IP, but I don't believe that it was branded. As Adam's family. I mean, I think what we're going to end up having is if, if, if Amazon decides to go with other shows, we're going to run into a situation that we have where, um, with, uh, Sony and Marvel over the Spider-Man IP. Yeah. Sony still owns the Spider-Man IP completely. Yeah. Marvel's allowed to use it in connotation to the greater Marvel cinematic universe. Yeah. Which Sony is not allowed to use Spider-Man. So Sony can make Spider-Man movies as standalones. And that's also why in the Spider-Man movies that Marvel has released with Tom Holland, it's included other characters from, um, the greater universe yeah. is because they have to include it within that universe and not as standalone spinoffs. The, um, so like even in 
what was that far from home where they had all three of the spider-mans all together yeah it still had dr strange yeah so i think that's how because they're currently on good terms well it's not it's not that they're on good terms it's that it's Sony's not producing anything that fits in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And in order for Marvel to use Spider-Man, they have to have it within the Cinematic Universe. So Wednesday. Well, Mar- the Marvel one is tricky, though, too, because they it sounds like. They are making it so Sony can't use Spider-Man. Unless Disney's involved. But then. So there's there's two things that I noticed with Wednesday. One. Yeah. Anywhere in the, the promotional material. And anywhere on Netflix. It never says the Addams Family. Two. They didn't use the Addams Family theme. Anywhere in the show. Just the. F- I don't want to spoiler it. Can't spoiler it. So, yes, there a it little, has... There was a little hint to it once. In the... Yes, but it wasn't... It was yeah. enough of a hint to where it's not going to break anything. Yeah. Um, holy shit. Wednesday... Netflix reports that Wednesday just broke its record for most viewed English language show in a week. Dang. With 341.23 million hours viewed. Woo. Quid game, but that was not English shot. It holds the all time weekly record with 571.8 million hours viewed. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Netflix says 50 million households total of Watch Wednesday this past week worldwide. It shares a record with Stranger Things for its reach being number one in 83 countries simultaneously. Holy cow. <laughs> I did not. I. This is why I like watch. This is what I love about digital media and information coming from digital media because that is crazy. And what Netflix can do and what they've managed to do, I think, and this is not going into spoiler territory because I'm not spoiling Wednesday yet. We, we can wait another month before we start spoiling it. Yeah. The Nevermore Academy. You want you want an IP that could have spinoff after spinoff after spinoff after spinoff. Nevermore Academy is amazing. I I was I was looking at like halfway through watching it. This was less of a Adams Family IP, and it felt more like the beginnings of a Nevermore Academy IP. Yeah. And I think that that would be the way to shift this. I mean, the fact that it's Wednesday Adams just gave him a familiar face, but it was not an Adams family style movie or show at all. And it was amazing. It's fun because it's like a murder mystery show, but it's with a yeah. familiar character. And I think the familiar character was necessary because I don't think that it would have been as popular if you had just done the Nevermore Academy and it was not Wednesday Adams. Yeah. If it had been any, if the name had been anything other than Wednesday Adams, I don't think, I think it would have been just as good, but I don't think it would have gotten the eyeballs that it did. Yeah. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I I think I think it's 
I, I think it was very smart the way they ran it. <laughs> they gave you something that was popular to introduce an entire new world, and they did it correctly. Yeah, I think they did a good job. Other than only having Tim Burton do four of them, I think, should, eh. I don't know. There's definitely a little, a little bit of a style shift for the last four episodes, but if like, I, I think you needed that. I don't know. We, we can talk about that more when we can get into spoiler territory. Yeah. But I don't, I noticed there were some definite changes like between the first half and the second half. There was, um, but I think a lot of those changes were stylistically. I think the story was still absolutely solid. Yeah. Well, and I think that was part of it was like, as the story changed, like this, the style needed to change to, f to give more emphasis on the things going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Like it I think gave, so. Gave it a different it's, feel, but but it, I don't think I don't think it ruined it. Yeah. Like a lot of times when you've had a a, a a big change that changes something stylistically, everything changes with it. And I think just the stylization of Tim Burton changed a bit, but I don't think it diminished anything else around. Yeah. Seeing Christina Ricci in it, though, is absolutely <laughs> fun. <laughs> that cracks me up every time. There is one line where she goes, well, I don't know. You, she, God, what she's, she's like, well, maybe I do know how you feel or something like that. She's maybe, maybe I do know a little bit about, about being you or something like that. And I about, I about lost it. I, was, I started laughing so hard. I had to pause it. I was just like, oh, that's, that was, that was amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet she does. <laughs> what? That was stellar. Uh. Dude. Oh, so. I watched all the Matrix movies and Dolby Atmos. And holy crap, dude, the remat like, they remastered the the old trilogy in Atmos. Yeah. What a freaking ridiculous difference. And then the new one was just bonkers good and hilarious too. And like a calling out Warner Brothers like right at the beginning was that was amazing. That was awesome. Have you have you watched the new one yet? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Calling out I, Warner Brothers was. Awesome. I enjoyed the new one a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Was awesome. And God, Neil Patrick Harris just keeps getting more and more handsome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to share that because. I I was just flabbergasted at how amazing the sound design was in that in the all four of them really. What was the other show? Oh yeah, you gotta watch uh, you gotta watch what we do in the shadows. It's on Hulu, but you gotta go watch the movie first. Find the movie, watch the movie first, and then watch the show. What we do in the shadows. Yeah, I told you about it. I don't know. Long time ago. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah. Dude, Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement. Jermaine Clement was Flight of the Concords. And he's, I mean, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, brilliant, brilliant actor. And Taika Waititi is just, dude, he's a brilliant director and writer. And the two of them together doing this like comedic vampire mockumentary movie. It's so yeah. good. 
It is so good. And then the show just makes it even better. Like all of the stuff that they tie in. It's so good. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out because I have those uh, Logitech Artemis Spectrum headphones that has 7.1 DTS built in. Yeah. And I'm trying to see if I can get them running in 7.1 with a cable because the uh, the wireless adapter broke on them. Uh-oh. So I got to figure out. But yeah, I can do uh, Dolby 7.1 surround or DTS Headphone X profiles hmm. on it. So once I get this this new Intel thing installed and reset everything, I'm going to use, I'm going to check them out. Cool. I mean, I should be able to use the 3.5 inch cable or the 3.5 cable or maybe i have to use the 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 usb port for it to get to work but i'll figure it out usb would probably be better you probably get more throughput i don't know i i have to see what they've got i mean it's because yeah. uh, i mean your your, your 3.5 millimeter cable is only going to be stereo channels just because of how they're set up you know you got a tip and a ring on a sleeve so you got your two sends and a single return yeah so uh, i mean you're not you're not gonna get 7.1 with a with a cable like that speaking of oh, which you know what i could do is i should just look at <sighs> The uh, uh, nine thirty three, Spectrum manual. That's what I can look at. Just look at the actual user manual itself. <laughs> Say, Dave. Yes. Mark, mark your calendar, December seventeenth. I need your help. Uh, give me a second. Bryan, Ohio. Williams County Public Library. 11 a.m. Except for I might want you there at 10 to help. We're going to set up speakers and run the cabling and stuff. And that was December... 17th. 17th. 10 a.m. at the library. Yeah. In Bryan, Ohio. Yeah. And I'll, I'll teach you how to run the the tablet mixer. Yes. We're, we're 2022. And do you know do you know how to make a band stand? A band stand? Yeah. You, no. you take you take away their chairs. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're welcome. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right, man. All right. We'll check y'all next week. Yeah. No, oh, sounds good. Woo. Hopefully, everybody's doing good. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. See you guys later. Later.